I don't feel I can cope today. I don't know where to go with how I feel. I feel really anxious and overwhelmed. Being asked to present to my senior leaders, it's a great opportunity, but I'm really anxious about this. Who can I ask for help or support? Will I look stupid if I do? Will they think I can't do my job? Sometimes I wake up in the morning and feel completely overwhelmed on the amount I need to achieve in a day. It's really important I have coping techniques in place to help me manage my anxiety and take care of my well-being. My partner has been admitted to a mental health hospital and I don't know how to tell my boss or my colleagues. I'm very worried about her and about how I will cope. I just feel so stressed out. But I know if I tell my boss, she'll just laugh and tell me to toughen up. I'm Katie Halliday, and I lead the mental health work stream for the Diversity Project. I work at BlackRock and have been heavily involved in forming our employee network that focuses on disability, mental health, and all aspects of, including carers, parents, families, and of course, advocates. I'm here today to talk to you about mental health in the workplace. Here at the Diversity Project, we believe that mental health is just as important as physical health. Everyone has it and we should all look after it. Let's start by looking at some stats on mental health. 70 million workdays are lost each year to mental health problems, 70 million. That is costing employers approximately two and a half billion pounds every year. Even more staggering is that when you look at the total time taken as sick, including injuries, ill health, etc., you can see that stress, depression and anxiety is the top reason that people take time out. Later in the session, we are going to explore the things that we as industry leaders can do to bring change to the workplace with regard attitude, acknowledgement and provision for mental health. But first, I'm going to hand you over to Anna who will be sharing her mental health journey with us today. I hate the phrase mental health. What are the connotations you think of when you hear the word mental? I prefer to simply say thinking. And I acknowledge that sometimes my thinking is a bit off from where I'd like it to be. But sometimes it's just my thinking. Other times it's my actions too. Sometimes my actions lead me to feel ashamed. Maybe I eat too much or... I exercise when I'm tired because of fear of inadequacy. My thinking is sometimes angry, resentful, selfish. These are not necessarily mental health issues, but they can lead to states of ill health if not addressed. And I'm not an expert on mental health or well-being, but I have struggled with my own thinking since a young age. I've labelled myself with different things over the years, anxiety, some depression, some self-harm, a suicide attempt. I've had disordered eating and I'm a recovering alcoholic for the past 23 years. In the workplace, I felt I've always had an imposter syndrome, a feeling that I'm gonna get found out for not being good enough. I'm now blessed for the last 23 years to be part of a 12-step recovery program. And I've learned that alcoholism is a threefold illness. It's physical, spiritual, and mental. And so my recovery has been spiritual, physical, and mental since I stopped drinking too. And my life has changed beyond recognition. And so has the industry where I work. When I started in financial services in the 1990s, there is no way I would have discussed how I felt sincerely inside in the workplace. But now, now I can do this and I can share my experience in this kind of forum in order that maybe just one other person can relate to what I have to say and to take some action for themselves. I returned to the city after a two year maternity career break a couple of years ago. My anxiety was through the roof. I don't know how I didn't run away. Sometimes I just, just made it through the day and yet yeah, my boss was, 
unbelievably supportive. And so was the company that I work for, the Bank of New York. I have always battled with disordered eating, the stress of lockdown, coronavirus, homeschooling, brought up a lot of anxiety and compulsive eating. I felt ashamed. I didn't want to own up to it, but I did. I tried to live in the solution wherever a problem occurs these days. I tried to focus on well-being, gratitude and helping others. For me, mental health isn't a one-off incident, although it can be for some. My experience is that it evolves as I evolve as a person and as I face all of life's experiences and challenges. I'm not cured, I'm not perfect, but I am real. I am human and I live a beautiful life. It is my experience that when we are honest and vulnerable with others about our thinking, we can be helped and move through it into something better. Thank you, Anna. That was incredibly powerful. We can all learn from Anna today. Not only has Anna shown strength and determination, she has also demonstrated how important support networks are and how powerful storytelling can be. Anna, thank you again. The coronavirus pandemic of 2020 has shone a light on mental health. Not only has it highlighted existing problems, but it's also created new anxieties and fears that possibly did not exist previously. In many circumstances, it has accelerated the onset of mental health crisis. Alcoholics Anonymous have reported a 300% increase in requests for assistance since the pandemic began. Boots the Chemist made their pharmacy consultation rooms safe places for the victims of domestic violence, as Refuge reported an exponential increase in cases of domestic abuse from March to June this year. In the first three months of lockdown, the Samaritans provided support to over half a million people who were struggling to cope. The time for us to act is now. Mental health in our workplace is every single person's responsibility. It cannot be forgotten or brushed to one side. We need to learn about it. We need to bring education to our workplace. We need to talk about it. From today's session alone, you can see how powerful storytelling can be. Let's use it to show mental health exists for every single one of us and start to break down the taboo. We need to bring better mental health provision to the workplace. Be a credible employer and show your teams that you take their mental health seriously. A thought to close on. The health and safety regulations of 1981 require employers to provide adequate and appropriate facilities so that their employers can receive immediate attention if they are injured or taken ill at work. Today, this legislation does not exist for mental health. Through 2021, our main aim is to see our members commit to having mental health first aiders available to all staff, physically or virtually. And we ask every single one of you to be smart about mental health. Thank you.